we back day three box score watching let's get right into it so we'll start with my favorite teams games since i have them in my favorite teams even though the hawks are not really my favorite team but i have them in because of my homie and i want to know how they play so i can trash talk him as soon as i wake up because <laughs> i'm a real hater nah i'm just playing uh or am i <clears throat> well let's first talk about the hawks against the magic the magic Play pretty decent. Paolo, you know, struggled shooting wise, but still he still looks really good. 2012 and 2. He's a special man. He's another point forward who can get at will to the rim. He obviously has to work on his shooting a little bit and you know he'll have games where he struggles because no one uh, except for maybe LeBron. Uh, I mean I wasn't here for LeBron's rookie. I don't I don't know how much he struggled, but everyone struggles in their rookie year sometimes. Franz Wagner was not that great and I feel like he should be a little better, maybe more aggressive. Uh, Wendell Carter wasn't good and Cole Anthony was great, but there's not much to talk about about the Magic. They got an exciting young core, exciting young pieces with Paolo leading the way and they'll be fine in a year or two, they'll be really good I feel like. That's all I can say about them really and Atlanta off to a 2-0 start, John Collins back-to-back -back really great games 23 13 and i'm mad because i locked him in my fantasy and th today he was even better and my friend that is a fan of the hawk said i should better log him in because he's not gonna have a better game and he did so shame on him <laughs> and dijante mari was once again really good 20 29 and 9 which is sensational next to trey young who struggled in the first half but turned it up in the second half made some clutch trees he had 25 and 13 you know he's struggles struggling shooting wise a little bit but he'll he'll turn it up and be ready uh, be ready to dominate more and more throughout the season and he is one of my sneaky mvp picks so i hope he is uh the hawks start 2 and 0 perfect start for them uh let's move on to the next game which we have the warriors against the nuggets which we have the warriors against the nuggets and And Denver was uh, simply sensational on offense, even though Warriors didn't play that much, that great of a defense, the Nuggets were special. They've made a lot of tough shots, a lot of open shots also. Kentavious Kentav Caldwell Pope, even though he has, you know, plus minus, but he made some really tough shots. Jokic was great, 7 out of 13, 11 free throws, triple double. Michael Porter Jr. made some tough shots. Jamal Murray didn't play, which might have helped them, because their defense was still not that good and uh, Jamal Murray probably wouldn't have helped that if Bruce Brown didn't play there a minute so it's gonna be very interesting to see how they tackle defense and how they play on defense throughout the year with Christian Brown who was really impressive on defense he was uh, kind of a glue guy out, out of the bench out there which I mean is really good for them but if they can have more players like him he played 23 minutes Bones Island was sensational in the first half kind of wiggled in the second half the Andre Jordan look great which is very sad but man it happens i guess james wiseman is learning so it happens and for my warriors some open shots weren't falling some jordan pool was not aggressive enough and they played some good defense on jordan pool himself uh steve carries experimenting with lineups with uh jamaica green jonathan kuminga and james wiseman playing together a lot of minutes kuminga didn't play in the second half and it was some ugly offense and ugly lineups out there but steve Kerr is in his back just trying 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 it out seeing what sticks what doesn't he'll he'll have this throughout the season and as he always does but he won all once he figures it out it's always special so it's kind of fun to see to me this year you know last season i was more skeptical more angry with him for that but this year i don't mind it you know it's it is what it is and i don't take a loss like this that badly and we almost got there we could have tied the game clay you know hit that break of a three then he tried to bait a foul tried to shoot it and at the same time the nugget we had no business coming back in that game and the nugget somehow gave us a shot we didn't take it doesn't matter steph continues great start to the season 34 points five and four five and four with five threes pretty good andrew wiggins continues his strong start to the game even though he didn't shoot as well as he could have he had 23 8 and 3 and draymond was sensational today so that's good to see he get, he's getting back to shape even more clay played more minutes good to see 
it's one loss, it doesn't matter really. And as a Warriors fan, I'm I'm happy with what I saw on offense. Slightly concerned with what I see on defense without Draymond, but we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, we always do. As for the Pelicans and the Hornet, Brandon Ingram once again sensational 28, 9 and 7, 11 free throws made. He he looks so good. I'm so happy with how he was playing. Zion didn't look as well. As he looked against Brooklyn, whose defense is uh, suspect at best, but I mean, Charlotte's not that much better. But he still made some tough shots. He's he's getting back into shape. He played 30 minutes. It's good to see. Jonas Valanciunas was sensational. 30 points, 17 rebounds. He was absolutely destroying the Charlotte Hornets, who are, I don't know, they're a tough bunch. And CJ McCollum was great. A big three of, for them. It's looking very good. Solid local ropers, man. I'm excited for the Pelicans this year. We will see how they fa fare once they play, you know, the tougher opponents once we get deeper into the season, how healthy they are, but they look so good. They look so good. They got a lot of great pieces that fit together. Some glue guys off the bench with Larry Nance, three-point shooter with Trey Murphy. Just a lot of bodies that are so good. They build in a good culture, good coach in Willie Green. Fun to see, fun to watch. Check check out Pelicans games if you can. If you don't know what to watch from the NBA, they're fun to watch. And Charlotte, I mean, I don't know, man. They're, they're just they're just Charlotte. They should just give up this season. It was great to see Dennis Smith Jr. who played 22 minutes, played pretty decent, 10 points, plus two. It was so fun to see him. You know, I'm happy for him. I'm I'm happy he gets a shot. He gets some time to try. It's it's great. You know, some people just didn't pan out as we want him to and it's great to see he's get another shot hopefully he takes more advantages of it with you know Lomelo also missing obviously today and yeah it's it's rough out there in charlotte man it's it's very rough out there well spurs pacers i didn't bother watching much from that even though the game looks kind of fun <laughs> based on score if you want to watch offense but i looked I bothered, I bothered enough. <laughs> I looked at Tyrese shots. He, he's still great. I mean, you know, they're tanking. They're gonna trade probably somebody even. They're tanking. Imagine Tyrese Halliburton, Benedict Maturin, Chris Duarte with Van Banyama. That would be incredible. And I looked at Benedict Maturin's shots. He looks comfy out there. He, you know, he had some rookie moment at the end of the game when he missed the shot made some shots but he looks really good he looks solid for them a good draft pick 26 points off the bench you know he pretty much played instead of chris duarte who's struggling to start the season but hopefully he'll turn it around hopefully he's not just another finished product that basically peaked in the year one and yeah i mean indiana's gonna be fun to watch for tyrese and benedict maturin and tell tank you know, tell just tank. Hopefully, they can get Van Banyama. And then we had the Wizards and the Bulls. Uh, Wizards defeating the Bulls on a game winner by Bradley Beal. And I mean, Chicago Bulls still without Zach Levine. Nikola Vucevic struggled today, which I mean, if he struggles from the field, it's pretty rough for them. Patrick Williams is just does not shoot that much. He's basically out there defending and doing nothing else, which is kind of sad to see. But hopefully, he'll turn the season around the Bulls got some decent depth and decent bench and they're gonna be uh, decent enough and you know Demar still 32 points 6 and 6 he's gonna be in the MVP race if they can keep winning but the Bulls are just gonna be somewhere out there in the play and maybe they can surprise few people we'll see but uh, Demar is still fun not much more to say to the Bulls. With Washington, though, it's fun to see their start to the season with, you know, some solid offense and really spread out offense with Bradley Beal taking 14 shots, Kristaps taking 13 shots, Kal Kuzma taking 16 shots, Rui getting 9 shots, Monte Morris getting 9 shots. They got some balanced scoring, Kal Kuzma with 26 points, Bradley Beal with 19 points, Kristaps with 14 points, 12 points from Hachimura. They look solid. But they looked solid to start last season. They were the first seed in like 20 games coming into the season. But uh, Johnny Davis might be a bust already. He did not play today, which makes sense. He he looks he looked bad in the preseason, and I'm not surprised he's not seeing any minutes. 
he might go down the bus train very fast and uh, I mean I'm sad for him but what can you do let us look at Bradley Bill's game winner went to his right such a great move on Caruso and tough 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 uh, push shot mm, incredible shot making great to see uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the Wizards and the Bulls one of the best games of the night the Nets and the Raptors with Pascal Siakam going bonkers 37 12 and 11 it was sensational out there uh, in the third quarter he just flipped the game around he was sensational the whole starting lineup pro for the Raptors is sensational we know Nick Nurse is gonna play all his guys 40 minutes a game uh, Precious Ejua was not good and the bench is still suspect but they are missing Otto Porter Jr. due to injury I guess I've not seen what's down with him but I mean that's just how uh, Nick Nurse rules they had a shot to win the game but uh, essentially in the end it was Kyrie and KD making tough shots when they needed him to and Kyrie was much better than he was against the Pelican Ben Simmons was better KD was not better but at least you know he made the uh, clutch three-pointer to put them up three with like 55 seconds left with Brooklyn um, I mean I feel like they're just they, they will be who they are but I mean we'll get games like this when they're fun to watch and at least a little bit and Nick Claxton was really good 1911 even though his free throws you know struggles are crazy a little bit too but uh, just fun to watch a more at least and it was a good up and up up and down game with them trading baskets after baskets Fred when Fred was going crazy in the fourth quarter and he matched them with every shot he had he made my fantasy really happy <laughs> and it was a great matchup and maybe a play per review <laughs> who knows <laughs> we'll see we'll see down the line up next we got the Celtics and the Heat with the Celtics taking care of the Heat Jalen Brown Jalen, Jason Tatum were once again really good both 25 plus points they seem to figure out how they play together the best they can Grand Williams of the bench once again chipped in now one lay plays really solid for them which is which is what they need they need him to play solid until Robert Williams gets back which is in like two months I think <coughs> and they're playing really decent and they're gonna be really good whole year once again I predict them to be the first seed they look really good to start we'll see how their season goes if they can make some moves maybe Malcolm Bargan struggled today but man he's still really good and we should talk about Miami starting O2 just like the Sixers they start O2 but I don't know man I'm worried about Miami I'm pretty worried about Miami, Miami, Miami. I'm pretty worried about Miami early in the season Tyler Hero 25 6 and 3 you know he's a bucket he's gonna get buckets Jimmy played 40 minutes 18 7 and 5 he was a plus 7 but at the same time I don't know man and Bam Adebayo at 28 and I mean 20, 19 8 and 5 or 8 of 11 maybe he should have to took more shots Kyle Lowry I mean at least he had points but he still looks bad Max Truss from last game struggled ah, they're gonna be inconsistent as hell I feel like this season and they don't have that much of a depth this year unless you know they once again find out find some random G leaguers as they always do they, um, I don't know man Miami is gonna be rough maybe and especially at the beginning they're gonna be very rough We'll see how they how they fare. You know, Pat Riley will always have something up his sleeve that they might make a trade. But I'm not liking what I'm seeing from them, and I'm I'm have a bad vibe from them. They will be interesting to watch throughout the season. And I mean, this was a Western Conference Finals uh, rematch, so yeah. As for what they need right now, they need to make shots. Obviously, they shoot shooting horrible from the three point line. They got out rebounded also. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Miami. I mean, they'll win games. They just always find a way. But I don't like them. I don't like them this year as much as I liked them last year. Even though there's not that much different, except you know, PG Tucker is gone, and I'm not sure if there are any is any more differences. Let's move on to the next one. I mean, the Knicks and the Pistons and the Knicks. They, I mean, that was a game I didn't watch. Uh, even though I like Kate, I like Jaden Ivy. I watched Jaden Ivy's possession. I watched Kate's possessions. How he looked. 
I mean, Kate's not not off to a hot start, but I mean, they're gonna be fine. They they they're and don't want to win that much anyway. I'm very impressed with Jalen Duran and his poise, his hands for his age and his. You know, they, they, they seem to hate on draft picks these days. I mean, Killian Hayes, we won't talk about him, but uh, they're, they're fine for the future. They probably still want, you know, the first round pick, I mean, first round, the first pick this year. And they're going to be, they're going to be fine. They're, they're, the, the Pistons and the Magic, they both, I really like their future. I really like how they draft uh, and I really like how they fit together. We'll see. We'll see where it goes in few years. I might make some future predictions for them down the road. It's good to see Cam Reddish get some minutes. He didn't play as well as against the Grizzlies, but he was still very good overall impact. And I'm happy that he get, gets to play some, you know, real minutes this year for the Knicks since they traded for him last season. And I really love Obi Toppin. I just want to add that right there. The Grizzlies and the Houston Rockets had a really good game, fun offense, uh, with Jamoran going for 49 points, he was going absolutely inc bonkers. Uh, his three-point shot selection, his three-point shot selection is really getting much and much better each year, and he made five of them, five of six. He looks, he, I mean, he's, he's great, he always works on what he needs to work on, and his three-pointer looks much more solid, much better. Uh, he's just incredible. It's gonna be hard for him not to be in, you know, top five, top three conversations for MVP, especially if they can win in Memphis, if they can, you know, keep winning. But, I mean, their defense is really rough right now without Jaron Jackson Jr., uh, you know, surveying it. So, that's something to look look forward to and look look out for throughout the year and in the next 20 games how their defense molds and folds. Desmond Bain struggled again but made some you know clutch shots but not not good to see from him. And their rookies once again made some solid impact with Santialdama already starting. We know he played very well against the Knicks. He struggled from the field but he's still a really solid player that they drafted and Jake Laravia who, I mean, the, the, the Grizzlies know how to draft, you gotta give them props for that, they know how to draft they guys, they draft tough guys, guys that can do a lot of everything, and that fit, you know, what they wanna do, and they get enough credit for that, but they should get even more credit for that, you know what I'm saying? And as for the Rockets, Jabari Smith struggled from the field again, but I'm not worried from him, I'm worried about the rebounds a little bit, but the shot's gonna start falling more because his his stroke looks pure, and you know he's off to a bad start, but he can turn it around. He's not bad, but just decent, which is for a second overall pick not good, but decent. And Jalen Green, my guy, Jalen Green, who I'm really rooting for, you know, struggled against Atlanta, turned it up this game, 33 points, 5-2, and two. he was a bucket, he's gonna get buckets throughout the year, I told everyone that. We'll see how efficient and how consistent his scoring is, but really good game to go off of. And Alfred and Shengun, everyone talk about Shengun. Uh, you know, he's a very good fantasy pick if you play fantasy. 23 and 12. <laughs> he was sensational. He was better than, I mean, Jabari and Bruno Fernando, obviously. So there's that. I mean, they're tanking, they're fine with losing. Uh, just if you want to watch something, watch Jalen Green highlights. He's fun to watch. Jalen Green highlights, Jalen Green shot chart, J if you want to watch something about the Rockets, it's Jalen Green and Jabari Smith, but mostly Jalen Green. Next up we have the Jazz going 2-0 to start the season, to start their tank season against the Timberwolves. And Lauri Markkanen continues his hot streak, he was sensational in Eurobasket for those who watched, uh, he put it on my Czech Republic in, in Eurobasket and he was sensational there. And he continues his good play, 24 and 13, he's solid, we'll see what his ceiling is, I'm not sure what his ceiling is, I'm gonna look into it more and maybe do like a ceiling, ceiling videos for players like Lore Markkanen and players that are, you know, further along the line than rookies, but somewhere out there that are really solid, but you're not sure what they can be, could be, I'm gonna do some ceiling floor videos for these types of guys in the future. And Jared Vanderbilt 
14 rebounds. He was pumped up to beat his old team. He was really pumped up at the end. Jordan Clarkson is a bucket. They need to trade him. Kelly Olenek is a bucket. They need to trade him. They need to get rid of everyone except Lowry Markan and Volker Kessler, Colin Sexton, and probably THT, I guess. But they just need to fire self way quickly and way further along they, they want to. And their coach is pretty decent. I'm not sure who is actually coaching them, but they seem pretty coached up. Uh, they need to, you know, <laughs> tank it up a little better. <laughs> they need to start tanking a little better. As for the Timberwolves, their offensive struggles from the first game with, you know, Cat and Anthony Edwards struggling. They, are, they didn't struggle as much. Anthony Edwards especially played really well on offense, but their defense was just not that good. Uh, Rudy Gobert, 23 rebounds, not, he was not as efficient and as good on offense as he was in the first game. They're gonna be. It's gonna be interesting to see how their off, off, offense uh, and defense evolves throughout the first 20 games. D'Angelo Russell played 39 minutes. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Cal Anderson left with an injury, which is rough for him because he's better for their defense and for everything they have. But hopefully he'll be fine. I'm not actually sure what happened to him, but I'll look for it i'll put it in the video post editing and i'll maybe speak for it a little bit but i'll put it in there d'angelo russell had an incredible shot to tie the game with cat you know playmaking pick and roll with Rudy Gobert, which is interesting to see it's gonna be interesting to see made conley fall down bang shot tough shot man it, it was really good but not enough to win that's for sure I seen his veins, I guess. And as for the last game of the day, the Portland Trail Trail As for the last game of the day, the Portland Trailblazers beat the Suns in overtime and they go move to 2-0, which is a very good start. Uh, which is a very promising start for the Portland Trailblazers. The Suns, uh, I mean Michael Bridge, you know, last season he was first team all defense. He got cooked this game. He was getting cooked out there. And I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe he's hit his ceiling. I'll do a video about him, probably. I don't know about him getting much better, especially with Chris Paul there. Cam Johnson struggled in the starting role again. Uh, campaign didn't do much. Their bench is suspect as hell with, you know, Damian Lee playing 30 minutes. I know he was a hero. I know he made a clutch shot in this game, but 30 minutes for Damian Lee is really rough. I mean, he's essentially our six man. I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just not what you want, you know. Uh, not what you want there. Uh, Devin Booker was great. He missed some clutch shots, but he's still sensational. He's got a smooth mid-range game, smooth game to himself. And DeAndre Ayton was pretty good, even though he missed a free throw late, which could have tied the game. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure. And let's talk about Portland, who surprise, surprising to start. Jeremy Grant didn't even play that well, but Dame, 41 points, 12 free throws, 5 threes, 12 made field goals, 41 and 7, he was solid. Yusuf Nurkic was also sensational, 20 and 17. He was fighting out there with Aiton, it was a good battle between these two. And Anthony Simons, he struggled, but, but he saved the best for last with this shot to win the game. We had two game winners today. He gets the ball from Dame, you know, puts Michael Bridges in the blender, a tough hook shot. Very tough, but you know, they went and Bridges, interesting to see. And I want to also, I also want to point out this Dame shot, which was a sensational offense. They were on 12 here, but I mean, this was so good. So great by Dame. Look at him going, mm, mm. Put campaign in a blender, turn around, fade away. Mm, beautiful shot. And the trail is a start to know, which is great for them. I mean, I mean, none of us take them seriously, I feel like, but we'll see how their season turns out. If they can get some solid bench bench play as they got today, chance to build up, coach them up to defend. It's they're gonna be interesting to watch. And I mean it's good to see Dame back. I mean I was Talk him in a little bit last game. He showed out today 41 points. It's good to see him healthy. Hopefully, he stays healthy. Everyone, hopefully, stays healthy. And that will do it for today's box score watching. What do we got 
on a Saturday. What do we have on Saturday? Oh, the Philadelphia 76ers need a win against the San Antonio Spurs. Pistons, uh, Pacers, not that fun. Celtics of Magic will be fun. Toronto and Miami should be fun. That's a good matchup. Cleveland, Chicago is a good matchup. Milwaukee against Houston. Memphis against Dallas. OKC, Denver, Clippers, Sacramento. Some some cool matches out there. I'll I'll probably watch one of them. I'll probably watch Cleveland, Chicago because I'm interesting to see how interested to see how Cleveland plays. I'll watch most of the possessions for most of the games that are good and the fourth quarters mostly and i'll be back reporting my analysis my stupid jokes and my whatever i feel like because it's fun man it's just fun to talk about basketball even though you know you get repetitive out there you get you get kind of stuck sometimes but i don't know it's just much much more fun to just talk about it even though you can get repetitive you can you know put in yourself in a blender in a way but it's good i'll also try to focus more on you know turnovers overall rebounding how the team's fair i'll try to you know maybe put some su su summary out here so right like here i i might i should probably you know look around for that more and we'll see i'll just keep figuring these this out this will be some I hope I can keep doing it daily because it's so fun, you know. I can get to watch much more basketball and make videos about it. It's just fun. We'll see. We'll see how how it goes. You know, this talk I'll probably cut out most of it, but we'll see. I'll see y'all next time.